Think that'll leak? <laughs> That's pretty little. It'll be fine. That'll be alright. We're Jordan and Megan, and we are converting our cargo trailer into a perpetual adventure machine. We want to produce as much as electricity as we can, so we purchased eight solar panels. We were so excited to pick them up from the freight company, only to find out... Two of them were busted in shipping. Previously on the build series, we finished up most of the living room walls and built the bathroom. We also installed lower and upper kitchen cabinet framing and started our work counter. We had already been through the process of installing solar panels on our previous house in Colorado and it was not cheap. Knowing this, Jordan did a ton of research into installing solar himself. This episode, we would like to share with you how we did the installation of eight 230 watt solar panels on our roof and how we made them ready to connect to our batteries. So do you remember back when we were running our wiring? We had also run our solar wire and it had to connect through the ceiling. That is actually when we installed this weatherproof electrical box on the roof. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> we used VHB tape to make sure the box would stay in place. Ooh, that's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> Not a lot of surface area to stick to, but yeah. it's something. I think it'll just stick with those two. Yeah. And then sealed it up. It's only bonus. Indubitably. Both inside and out. So it runs along the solar panel. All four pairs of wires run over to this box. Each one is ran through its own hole, sealed up, and then they're ran through a penetration into the ceiling. We had already dealt with major issues receiving our batteries, so we were stupid excited to get the call that our solar panels had arrived. They had been shipped by freight, so we arranged to pick them up ourselves. When we got there, we were so disappointed to see they had been damaged in shipping. Jordan inspected and documented all the damage and immediately called the company we had ordered them from. We ordered solar panels from a company who sells used panels. Apparently they came from a building that was next door to one that had caught fire. A few of the panels were damaged from the fire, so the owners decided to replace all 1800 solar panels on their building. Most of the panels like these were in perfectly good condition and pretty inexpensive. Once Jordan got all the panels unloaded, he cleaned them up 
and tested each one. Turns out, all of them, even the damaged ones, still worked. It was just the glass that had shattered. I'm wondering if I can salvage these. If I can get the glass off of them, the part underneath still works. It just won't be protected anymore. Two of them were busted in shipping. Yeah, they're uh, they're gonna be sending us new ones. Giant frisbee number two. Looks like neither of them are broken. A great big thank you to Great Solar Panels for making it so easy to get replacement panels and so quickly. On the panels, there was a different style connector. So we took those off and replaced them with these. We're using these particular MC4 connectors. Had to crimp them on under here. There's a crimp. Way, of course, we don't have any video of us doing. <laughs> so we crimp those on, crimp the, them onto here, and then those plug in. Typically, an MC4 connector is just a single, but this one has the split for making it uh, two to one or one to two, depending on the direction you're going. I didn't run, a, run eight wires, so we're doing four wires. We have to pair two panels down to one wire pair for each and then run the four wires in. So two of these panels over here are running into one of these and then joining together and then going out as a single wire. So one of these is hot and one of them is ground and it goes over to two of our panels over this way. I took the studs we had cut out of the trailer for the windows and made mounts out of them. I removed the glue with a grinder and cut them to size. Before lifting them onto the roof, Noah and I bolted two panels together to create three pairs. The Colorado summer sun can be brutal especially reflecting right back at you off of a silver roof. So we have eight panels set up in parallel. A lot of times people do a series, which allows them to use smaller wire, and it increases the voltage of the overall system going into the uh, vehicle. Problem with series is if you take this one panel and it's in series with all the others and you do this, none of it works. Even a little bit of shade in a series setup, a little bit of shade drastically reduces overall production of all of it. But in parallel, this whole panel can be shaded and all the others will still produce at their full capacity for whatever, whatever the sun is doing for that day. 
So we decided to run parallel, which just means we had to run more wires, larger wires, and uh, makes it so that a little bit of shade doesn't severely cut off our production. After deciding on the best panel layout, we need to locate the ceiling joists. This will determine where we attach the mounts on the panels so we can secure them properly. We were entering our fifth month of our build. We had already surpassed our four month goal and it didn't feel like we were anywhere close to done. It took about two days to get all the panels onto the roof, mounted, sealed, and wired in. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that you find this information helpful for your own build. I'm gonna disconnect them because they're under load. They're working. <laughs> If you have any questions about something specific, just leave it in the comments below. Give us a like if you are enjoying what you see, and subscribe if you haven't already. Come with us on our perpetual adventure as we continue to create our tiny home on wheels.